Hello, it's me again. God, it's been quite a while since I've done one of these. Um, probably about a month ago when I last did a broadcast, so a lot has happened by then. My God. Um, so where I finished up last time, um, I was just about to go in for my third R-chart chemotherapy. And um, pretty much the same two times I went in, did that, it was fine. Um the thing that struck me throughout the third course of chemo was that I felt really tired, you know, a lot more than I had done before. Um, tiredness was a big factor. Um, I felt quite nauseous for the first few days as well, and I haven't really suffered with that too much. But it's all manageable, bearable stuff, you know, but it's just that it seemed to get tougher on each step, and that has been suggested that it has, like, a, a, um, a cumulative effect as it goes on, um, but no real dramas, no real issues. I mentioned about third week being Christmas week, and it was, and it was, you know, I was I was bright, um, quite awake for most of it. It was lovely. Christmas Day was amazing. It was lovely. Um, it's just nice having the kids in the house. Well, they're not kids, but, you know, just listen to them laughing and joking and the banter. It's uh, It was lovely. Really, really lovely day. Um, so all was going well. Um, I was due to go in, or provisionally booked to go in for my high dose cytorabine chemotherapy, which is the one I've sort of been apprehensive about because I've tried to get in there twice before and it's both been postponed. Firstly, because of the awful hemorrhoid situation, and the second one was because of COVID shut the ward. So there's already a bit of a sort of anxiety building up about this particular treatment. Well, that didn't help when on Monday the 28th, I woke up in the night shivering, but violently, violently shivering. Um, it was rocking the bed. I couldn't control it. The, the shivers were so extreme that it was hurting my muscles i was struggling to breathe it's really scary if i'm honest i was i was i was really scared my temperature was getting higher and higher um so my wife phoned 999 so the ambulance came out and that was about eight o'clock monday morning um they took me straight in to a and e put me in a secure room just off a and e and um, ran some fluids, antibiotics, a couple of blood tests and that. Didn't really do a great deal, if I'm honest. And then just discharged me about two o'clock in the afternoon without any real answers or any discharge papers or nothing at all. I was a little bit concerned about it. But the temperature had stabilised, and whether that's because of the paracetamol, I don't know, but... The, temperature had stabilised. So I got home and was, was still quite concerned and I went to bed that night and the same thing happened again with the shivers and and everything else and that was yeah, just after midnight I think that was and I came downstairs I didn't want to wake my wife up she, she woke up and I said look I'll deal with this because you've got to go to work, you just get some sleep. So I phoned the emergency services and yet again the ambulance came out and my temperature was, four, I think it was 40.4, so really like high. With the same shivers, shakes, everything, it was awful. Um, so I went back into A&E again, into another secure room. Uh, this time I think they were a bit more concerned so they took a bit more time over doing tests and uh, everything x-rays you name it they did the lot and then I got admitted into the the ward at Kettering General Hospital and that would have been pff, lost track of time that would have been Tuesday afternoon yeah sort of four or five is Tuesday afternoon and and they admitted me and um I wasn't really prepared, didn't have any bags. Um, but the plan for me was to do my high-dose chemo um, that week. 
as well. So this was another one I, when I talk about the two occasions where it was postponed previously, you know, suddenly I'm about to do that chemotherapy and I get this um, this horrible temperature. They did link it to an infection in the pick line that I've got on my arm, which is quite common. I know a few people that have had similar infections. Um, so they treated me with all sorts of antibiotics. Oh, I've taken so many drugs, you wouldn't believe it. But it did the trick eventually. It got the temperature down, all my ops were stable, and they elected to start chemotherapy. What day is it? I don't know. On, on one day, I've lost track of days. Um, so, yeah, so I spent New Year's Eve in on the ward. have to say, the staff there are just so, so amazing, all of them. They're just so attentive, so, I don't know, they're just a credit to the profession. They all are, aren't they? You know, with everything that's going on. It was, it was incredible, and... You know, I, I've forged some quite good relationships there, you know. Um, but it was tough because you sort of isolated. You're stuck in that room all day. You're not allowed out of the room, um, obviously, for risk of further infection and COVID, which is rife everywhere. Um, fresh air I craved. Uh, <laughs> I'd stick my head, the window opened about six inches, so I'd sort of stick my mouth out and take a few gulps of fresh air every now and then. Um, I've, I worked out that from the door of the room that I was in to the fridge at the side of my bed, if I walked out 91 times, there and back 91 times, it would be the equivalent of a kilometre. So I tried to do that every day. <laughs> Just to try and get some exercise because you just lie on a bed and you're sitting in a chair, you feel like you're wasted away. Um, so yeah, Elaine, my wife, brought me some provisions up and a few little treats and she even delivered in a, a Costa one day which tasted like nectar because hospital food is alright, you know. It, I quite like it but the coffee's rank and to get that Costa coming through the door is pretty special. Bless you, thank you for that love. Um, so yeah, um, so then I had chemo, started chemotherapy. So the regime that I was on, um, was four sessions basically, um, with 12 hour gaps in between. So I started off on the rituximab treatment just on the first one and then went straight into the cytarabine and that would have been around about six o'clock in the morning. Um, no, sorry, I did the first one in the evening. And that that took sort of five hours to do, maybe five and a half by the time I'd done the flushes. And then 12 hours later, they did the cytarabine and also for the next two occasions. So really in the space of 24 hours, you've had four doses of chemotherapy, which is, you know, pretty intense, to be honest, and it's strong stuff as well. Um... So at this point, I think I'd been in hospital for probably 10 days-ish, there or thereabouts. And, um, but I'd responded well and all my observations were good, my bloods were good. And I was hoping to get out sometime over the weekend. It's, what day is Friday today? So tomorrow or Sunday, I was hoping to get out. And they actually let me out last night, which was fantastic. Because I've missed my home comforts. Obviously, I've missed my wife and daughter, and just to have a bit of freedom, you know. I mean, I can't go out or anything, but I can walk around the house and uh, do a few bits. So it's been really tough, if I'm honest, um, and quite scary, really. I think sometimes you just bubble along going through the treatment, you feel a bit tired, you feel a bit queasy, but that's it. And sometimes something comes along and really rocks you and that did that that scared me and, and it just makes you think that this thing is is real you know this fight that we got on my hands but fight is what you have to do um hoping to get a scan in a couple of weeks um really looking forward to that because i've got a feeling that treatment's going really well and uh 
I think I'm going to have another one of these high dose chemos in about four weeks time. Um, but in the meantime, they're going to monitor me closely. I've got to go in twice a week to have complete checkups. I've got to monitor my temperature every four hours. And if there's any deviation, you know, if it starts creeping up above 37 and a half, I've got to call it in. Um, so yeah, you know, there's a lot of responsibility for me to do stuff. I'm used to doctors and that saying, taking control, but I've got to be responsible as well, which I will be, but, but yeah, but I'm still here, um, here to tell the tale and I certainly will be going forward because I'm going to beat this thing and I feel that I am already beating it, but it's just a long process and one that with the support I've got, I know I can do. So um, just a little tag on the end of this, which will be me just about to have my first chemo session. And um, yeah, I'll say so far so good because I've got to keep positive. So I'm smiling, look, keep smiling, all right? You take care of yourselves, everyone. Thanks for watching. All right, cheers, bye now.